Train the muscles, not the joints. Well, welcome to a live workout. I'm gonna do uh, some shoulders in this live workout. I'm gonna do a couple other body parts, but I'm just gonna probably contain the shoulders in this workout anyway, uh, as far as the video goes. But, uh, but yeah, we'll see. So I'm gonna start off with some shoulder press. I'm gonna do a little bit more exercise than I usually do because you know I train shoulders and every other body part pretty high frequent rate, right? so I do a little bit lower volume. But yeah, just for the sake of entertainment, I'm gonna do a few more sets and a few different exercises. And uh, yeah, I had a request for this, so yeah, that's why I'm doing it. So here we go, I'm just gonna warm up just with one, uh, just one bar, not seven bars, but I usually I lift with one bar. And then uh, no weight, just to warm up the shoulder here, get it moving, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Now a lot of people think you have to go like this for shoulder press, you gotta press the weight back. I find I get a lot of neck when I do that, which is not a bad thing, but I'm trying to push the delts, right? So I'm just here and then down, right? If you want to rest at the top, that's fine. Especially with standing, you're going to get more trap like that. But my goal is to work those pushing muscles. Hmm. Very nice. Let's get some music going. Set a rotator cuff. It's like a rotator cuff exercise, but almost like a lot of raising rotator cuff. As you can see, I'm just doing really light. I'm just trying to get some blood in here. That's all I'm doing. That was a nice crack there. I don't know if you heard that. Stretch the front delt here. It's a front delt stretch. It's funny, most of the guys on the internet right now are like the, the full range of motion purists. <laughs> but they would never do most in, uh, isolation exercises if they followed their religion all the way through. <laughs> because a lot of joints, they, they do more than just uh, maybe in isolation. So the lateral raise, for instance, when you lift the arm up, they can go all the way up. You just have to rotate a little bit, you know, that thumb up and here you go above your head. So those full range of motion exercise pierce would never do lateral raises just out to the side, you know what I'm saying? If they follow their own rules, that is. So it's kind of funny. These people will never climb the mountain. They'll never climb the mountain. They'll just come tumbling down. That's it. Tumbling down. All right.
When you burn, burn, burn. It's over here. Make sure you can see me, right? Can you see me? So yeah, so I find that when I look from here to here, if I go from here to here, it's all neck. I feel all neck. I don't feel any extra delt, so my goal is just to push that delt into failure. After all, I'm training shoulders, right? But it could be because I dislocated a shoulder. It could be because I tore this rotator cuff in hockey, you know, getting hit. Then maybe I get a lot of neck recruitment from pressing, so I have to keep that in mind when I also consider the range of motion I'm going to be using, right? But I can honestly say that even before I dislocated my shoulder, same range of motion, honestly, I always found that that was the best for my shoulders. And the only time that I would lock out at the top or close to lock out is when I wanted to take a rest so I could get an extra rep or something. But I just had a nap. Yeah, I'm gonna get everything going after having a nap. You gotta pump yourself up. You gotta do little movements, pump yourself up through the workout. Because as you can see, I don't have a cheering section, so. Yeah. All right, get a sip of coffee here. Actually, this isn't coffee. I'm not drinking coffee. I'm drinking, it's like a coffee substitute made with barley. And uh, what is it? A little bit of barley and uh, chicory root. So it's pretty good. So that's what I drink mostly now. Pretty much no calories to it, but it gives a good flavor. So. Okay, I just adjusted the camera, so set number three, I believe. fun I was stretching up at the top a little bit but again I find that's not the perfect range of motion for me but I still mess around sometimes sometimes I'll do something different just for fun so yeah just whenever you're messing around with exercises find out which one is not just more of a challenge because that's where people make a mistake they they say how can I make an exercise harder but not necessarily how can I make an exercise harder on the muscle group I want to hit. So that's the point, right? So some people think harder is automatically going to bring more gains, but not necessarily. Sometimes it'll bring gains to a different area than you want to hit. Or it might strain something. You know, sometimes harder means you're bending your fucking knees backwards, you know, and looking like an ostrich when you're trying to squat. So again, these are things to consider, right? It's gonna rest about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. I'm doing another set.
mountain. Okay, mountain delts. Who wrote this shitty music anyway? I did. If you guys want to have any of my music that I'm playing, it's all on my website, naturalandbodyboom.com. So. And I will be coming out with a new album soon. I just said, what I'm trying to do now is spam me up with videos. I'm going to try to do a lot of videos next little while. So. But I do have a music track that I've been working on and I'm messing around with that. And then I, I want to do one other one and then I'll have the new album out. So, so that'll be good. Let's change the angle here. Mm. I know you're a little lower than I am right now, but I hope you're not too intimidated. I'm trying not to intimidate you too much. I don't want to scare you, right? You, you need to watch the video. I don't want to scare you out of watching the video, right? No, this is not a monster flick. Just so you know, this is not a monster flick. It's not a monster movie. This is training. Ooh. My shoulder press workout so far so now I'm gonna go to uh, some laterals some bent over laterals on the bench and we do that first let's dance our way over here we're dancing yeah dancing you're a good dance partner mm. Not my bike. All right, just a subtle less score. Okay. Now the nice part about these is that I find they use a lot of rotator cuff along with the rear delts, but there's so many different ways you can do them. You can do them straight out like this for more rear delt. I do them like this because I'm trying to get the rear rotator cuff in. And then also there's this skiing type movement where you do get a, quite a bit of delts in. A little bit of lats too, but a lot of delts. So sometimes I'll do combinations. Now directly up to the side here.
That's why I spread them laying down. You can just take a nap after. That was good. Oh, that time, yeah, that was good. Hey, shoulders coming out. See, I'm getting a pump. A lot of people don't realize the rotator cuff and the rear delts are really what play a big role in giving that shoulder that balloon type effect. It's not always the front delts. Too many people are obsessed with front delt training. So you get a lot of front delt training when you're doing bench presses or inclines. And I'm not saying not to train them, but spend at least just as much time on your side and rear delts as you do in the front. Okay, I had about a minute rest, minute and a half. Bit a minute and a half. I just changed the camera angle a little bit, so. Just using light weight too. I'm not using heavy weight on this, but burns like hell. Change the angle, change the angle. Not my bike. All right, get zoomed in there. Cool. So obviously working the side delts and the front delts are important, but a lot of times when people are pressing so much, doing a lot of pressing movements, it is common for there to be a strength in dogs because most people start with a lot of pressing movements instead of pulling movements at first. So you do want to balance it out. And also you want to access any muscle fibers that you have not been concentrating on. So if you've been concentrating primarily on quad training, well, concentrate on hamstrings for a while. If you've been concentrating primarily on front delt, well, it makes sense that maybe you have not harvested all the gains you can out of the side delts or the rear delts or the rotator cuff. So, yeah, sometimes there's these hidden little places that you can get some gains from, so not a bad thing to uh, investigate, right? Great. Ooh, my delts are pumped. Pump delts, man, pump delts. <clears throat> Burn too much to do the last one. That was it?
See? Delts kind of pumped, right? Can you see it? Can you see? Mountain. Okay, so I took a couple minutes rest just to get the burn out of my delts here. And I'm gonna do a few sets of lateral raises. Again, I'm just doing light for today. Sometimes I'll go heavier, sometimes I'll go lighter, but today's more of a lighter day. And uh, because I am doing more sets too, and just getting the pump here. And I didn't eat enough protein today. I should have ate more. So those of you that are eating enough protein and you notice you're not getting the same pump that you usually get, well, yeah, up that protein a bit. Hi. Okay. And if you're noticing one of my arms goes up different than the other, it's just because of the slap tear, the tear in my labrum on my right shoulder, so it causes my arm to move a little differently. So don't you try to move in balance. I mean, if you have two good labrums, then yeah, you don't need to have one arm down more than the other. See if there's a question here on YouTube that I can answer quickly in between sets here. One second. Scroll through here. But somebody asked about um, about if bodybuilding is all about feel, then why do we need mirrors? Well, as bodybuilders, like, what's what's the point of having mirrors in the gym? Well, one of the reasons is uh, there's obviously a period of time before you're aware enough of what feeling or sensation in your body, what that means, and then what your body looks like. Like for instance, like uh, it's kind of like skating. I mean, when you fall down, obviously you've lost some sort of mind muscle connection when you're skating, right? Well, with training, when you look in the mirror, you can actually see and get an idea what the form feels like or looks like, sorry. But when you know what it looks like, then you match the feeling to what it looks like. And then from there, when there's no mirror, you can mimic that. Uh, it doesn't mean that the mirror is telling you the absolute truth all the time and that the mirror is the goal. The goal is actually to expand your awareness so that you have a better uh, connection with the feeling of your body and knowing what those feelings mean. Because when you first start training, good pain, bad pain, it all feels the same. A lot of times you don't know the difference between good pain or bad pain. That's really the big thing. But as you go through your training, you start to realize what the difference is. So on that note, when you're training, obviously, you will be looking in the mirror and seeing what you look like and having all sorts of sensations go through your mind and, <laughs> and then through your body. But you also will notice that the mirror, when you look at the mirror, like say when you're doing a balance type exercise or you're balancing, it's easier for you to find balance, right? So try doing a squat by closing your eyes and then do a squat by opening your eyes and, and look at in the mirror. You'll notice that you have a little bit more stability, which is why some people close their eyes when they train in balance type exercises. So in sports specific training, some hockey players and stuff that close their eyes as they're trying to find their balance because they're trying to get a deeper connection to that core and that feeling and not using external um, you know, uh, um, information from the eyes themselves in order to find balance, right? So yeah, that's a couple reasons why the mirror is there. But yes, ideally you should be able to know what's a good feeling or a bad feeling just from the feelings themselves, right? But at first you have to start with a template. You have to start with squat this way, bench press this way, whatever. And then in time you start to uh, put things together based on what sensations you experience, how you feel the days after you train, whether you have good pain, bad pain, whether you get inflammation in the joints or not, whether you make gains or not. You know, these are all factors that are learned over time. But I always talk about expanding that awareness is the first, foremost, first and foremost goal because 
that's going to teach you much more than you just following a blind template. Following a blind template, you're going to know that there's some parts of that template that are going to work really well for you, but there's going to be those odd exercises or movements that are just not going to feel right at all. And at some point you need to graduate out of them or to shift the way you do them in order for you to have better longevity in bodybuilding or fitness, right? Right, that's enough for shoulders for tonight. I'm going to get on to my other body parts, but this concludes the shoulder part of this workout. Now I'm going to go uh, train a few other body parts here. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you subscribe and you share my stuff because apparently I don't say that enough. So yeah, do that. And thanks a lot for watching and whatever. And if you need to get home, you just go to nextmybodybuilding.com. And thanks to the Patreon supporters. And take care for now. Mountain.